Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about a book that I want to be reading. This is going to be one of the authors I wanted to try this year and we're going to do Alex E. Harrow. Now I want to start at the beginning with Alex E. Harrow's books and that is The 10,000 Doors of January. Do I know anything about this book? I think this has portal fantasy the doors that our main character January finds are medical doors that lead somewhere. That's pretty much all I know. It is set right at the beginning of the 20th century and our main character is described as an in-between. So some kind of like racial ambiguity going on here. I heard that this isn't great mixed race representation. I can't speak to that because I'm white. So just keep that in mind, but I'm intrigued to see where the story goes. I don't read a lot of portal fantasy, so it's going to be interesting. The way this video works is I will update you when I'm 25% through, when I'm 50% through, 75% through, and when I finish the book. So you can go on this reading journey with me and we'll basically read it together. So I'm currently a little bit more than 25% into the 10,000 Doors of January, so I wanted to give you a first update and let you know a little bit more of what this book is actually about. Now we're following our main character called January. She is described as kind of a mixed race person who grows up with this white man who is very rich. This man is called Mr. Locke and I think that um, I can throw in right here that one of the things that is very fascinating about this book is the use of names. I will go into that in a second. But uh, January grows up with him and when she is still a child they go to Kentucky and she discovers this door where uh, she basically goes through and she sees a different place somewhere else and all her life she has dreamed of going away. Her father is in the employ of Mr. Locke and he goes around the world to discover some kind of like archaeological things and stuff like that. So uh, basically Mr. Locke is a collector, he's also part of a society of these people, of these rich white people who collect things that are not theirs. So she grows up in that world and she wants to go traveling with her father. She has always dreamed of going away and so when she finds this door it really changes something in her. But in her upbringing, Mr. Locke is really trying to make her into a nice young lady. And so uh, she has to stuff down a lot of her hopes and dreams and just be that good girl that he wants her to be. Now, when she is then in her later teens, she has kind of a falling out with Mr. Locke. And she also has a friend or... I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a companion that her father sent her, a woman called Jane who is from Africa, she's a black woman and we'll see where it goes from here. At the point where I just stopped, the main character January is trying to escape uh, from Mr. Locke's house, so we'll see how that develops, but this is basically what is happening. now. During that time, January also discovers a book that she thinks is a secret gift to her and that is The Ten Thousand Doors. And this is uh, something that we read excerpts of as well and in that we follow a woman called Adelaide or at first it's a girl but then she grows up into a woman, Adelaide. And Adelaide does discover the doors and when she interacts with the door for the first time she actually meets another boy who I have very strong suspicions about who these two people are. We'll see whether they're correct. I'm not going to say them because I don't want to spoil anything in case they're correct, but there is like this underlying feeling that I have who they might be. But basically she meets this boy, this mysterious boy, um, close to one of those doors and uh, after they spend like an afternoon together talking and also kissing each other before they part ways, 
then he goes back through his door and he's basically gone and then so Adelaide uh, which is called Aid um, because people just shorten her name to that and I think it's also one of those names that is probably kind of like a message because the story of Aid is something that comes to January when she really needs it. So Aid then goes around the world looking for these doors and we read excerpts of her story that was written down by someone else. We don't really know who wrote it, even though again I have a suspicion, but then I'm not. I'm just not sure. So uh, yeah, that's that's the basic setup. So we're looking for these doors and we're kind of waiting for January to get up and leave and go figure out these doors for herself. So far she's not really done that. And I'm really enjoying it. I think the tone is very lovely to read. I really like the writing style. It is a little bit witty, but also has this like fairy tale esque, a little bit detached style. So it definitely has this like autumn or winter vibe. It's definitely a book that I associate with just cozying up and listening to someone tell a story. So doing the audiobook is very nice for that. At the same time, I feel like with some of the names, I'm kind of like missing missing some things. So. We'll see about that. But yeah, I talked about the names. We have Mr. Locke, who is someone who really makes January small and tries to confine her to the space he deems appropriate for her. So I think having him be called Locke, something that locks someone up, is very interesting, especially because just the way it is told, we see that January does feel for him. She loves him in a way because he is another father figure in her life, but at the same time she can see later on um, when she's growing up how that confines her as well. Now January's name is also very interesting and it is brought up in that first quarter of the book, but it's not really explained, but if you know, you know. So um, this might be considered a tiny bit of a spoiler, but I don't think so. So basically January um, is the first month of the year and in the book it is also said that it is named after a Roman god Janus or Janus if you pronounce it English and this god is a two-headed god so if you see depictions of him he also he always has two faces and the thing is that this god this this depiction of the god is usually found above doorways so we see that the name January already has this connection to doors and doorways and the reason for her name that her father gives is that her mother liked it and he liked the meaning of it so we'll see about that but yeah that is just like one thing where you can very clearly see the the way names are important in the story another name that i think is very very cute is the name of her dog she gets gifted a dog from a local boy she used to play with as a child and she names the dog bad now <laughs> This is short for Sinbad, which is also explained in this first quarter, but I think it's so funny because this dog literally is the most protective dog you can ever imagine. He does have very good, um, like, he's a very good judge of character, so he will only allow people who are good people near our main character generally and his name being bad is just so funny to me so yeah I'm really having a good time with this book so far but I'm also ready for the plot to pick up because so far generally it hasn't really done anything yet apart from reading a little bit um so yeah I'm, I'm ready for things to get started now I feel comfortable with these characters I think I know where they're coming from and I want to see them go on some kind of an adventure now because they are kind of fed up with their lives and I'm kind of fed up with reading about their boring lives too. So now let's get some action, please. So I'm now halfway through the 10,000 Doors of January and I wanted to give you a quick update how the second quarter worked for me. Now I still don't know how I feel about this book. I do like the writing style and the themes, but I still don't love the plot of this book. 
In the second part, we mainly have our main character reading a book and us reading the book with her. Now, I did like the story of the book, but it is quite detached in the way it is written because it is a story in a book. So that way, I felt like we don't really get too much closer to our characters, which I'm a character-driven reader. So I just really want to know these characters. And I feel like while the writing is very beautiful and the themes are very beautiful, I just don't get to know the characters in a way that I really want. And then the plot also is just at a snail's pace in the second quarter. Now, some time of that we spend in a mental, mental institution, which is also just not a thing that, I don't know, that just sparked enjoyment reading about for me. So I am intrigued to see how this book will progress now, because at the point where I'm stopping, there is an option that we're leaving this setting again. And it definitely wasn't my favorite. I don't think it really added anything to this story and we'll see where it goes from here but it just it didn't really intrigue me I don't think it had like a interesting discussion I haven't seen before about this institution in the 1900s so I just don't know we'll see where it goes so far as I said writing very strong themes very interesting but I just need the plot to pick up and I need to just just get to know these characters a little bit better in a way, like really see them take charge and do something. So yeah, that's that's what I want to see from the third quarter now. And we'll see whether I will get that. I will definitely update you on that. I try to be rake so I don't spoil anything. But there was also quite a horrific scene that involved the dog in the second part. So if you are sensitive to uh, um, pet and animal harm, then wouldn't def wouldn't wouldn't recommend this necessarily. So we'll see how it progresses. But I just need something more. I just I'm craving something more from this book. There was also something quite obvious that we as readers could piece together quite easily that our main character wasn't really seeing for the longest time. So that has been resolved now because, yeah, it was literally told to her like, this is what's going on here. And then she was like, oh, how didn't I see that? And I'm like, yeah, finally, okay, now we're all on the same page. That's, that's very good. So I'm now three quarters into the 10,000 doors of January and we do get to explore some other worlds, finally. We do get some action, finally, and it seems like the plot is moving forward a little bit. We also learn some more about the parents of our main character. And for that part, I must say that the white privilege of her mom is pretty interesting to say the least like there is this moment where she has an idea she wants to do something and if you would think it through with the time they're living in and the kind of area she's from she could absolutely see how that would be a terrible idea and she's like the only adult in the room who would know that and she d she doesn't she doesn't see how that is an a horrible idea and yeah I don't know <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happened there um, I mean she's not supposed to be like a very um, educated woman but still I think like if you have traveled a lot like it seems her mom has you would expect that she just picked up on some things like the racism during that time in the US? I don't know, just just an idea. So uh, yeah, there's just some things in the story that just 
make me want to go like mm, because like I yeah I don't know I feel like some of the characters just don't act very smart even when they're supposed to be smart and also with her father there's a couple of things where I'm like yeah you could have figured some of these things out quite a lot sooner I guess but um yeah I think the mother is definitely a more like interesting example of that. Um, apart from that, I do like where we're going right now. I like that we're finally having some some excitement in the story. Our main character finally finished reading the book she was reading and we were reading with her. So now she can actually do her own story because after all this book is called The Ten Thousand Doors of January and yeah it, it just it just takes a little bit of time and like one thing I've also realized is that right now it's just not the right time for me to read this book. I am a mood reader and a seasonal reader and right now we're still having 30 degrees celsius outside. It is hot and this is a book that gives me these slower autumnal and winter vibes. So I think if I would have read this in a more like fairy tale slow mood, I would enjoy this even more. I think right now what I would really need is like a fast paced YA horror story. Don't ask me what that was. It was the cat, but whatever she did. I don't know. But yeah, it, it's just, it's a mixture of this book not doing quite what I wanted to do and then also me not being in the right mood to read this book. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. We'll just let it stand here. I'm excited and interested to see where the last quarter will go now. I hope we will get like a more epic conclusion. There are some things I hope will happen. But also, there isn't that much of a book left, so we'll see how it goes, and I'll give you my final update once I'm done. So we have come to the end of this video, because yesterday I finished reading The Ten Thousand Doors of January. I must say that unfortunately this book is not a new favorite. I was really really hoping it would be. In the end I decided to give it 3.5 stars. I think that the ending is quite nice. I did like the way it is wrapped up. But while reading this book I was actually wondering what like age range this was targeting. So I looked it up and it seems to be YA and I can see that with the way everything works out. It definitely fits more into a YA narrative than adult. And still there were a couple of moments in this book where I'm like, is this really YA? I'm not so sure. But yeah, overall I did enjoy this book. It's just that it never really gripped me in the way I wanted it to and I never really cared in a way I wanted to. So unfortunately not a complete success but I am so so open to read more by this author and I actually plan on doing that maybe even later this year. Like reading something for October maybe, we'll see about that. But yeah, this story did end up being like a nice kind of fairy tale story if you like that kind of style where you're always a little bit detached and looking at it from a, a, like a detached point of view and you already kind of know that some things will be okay just from the way the story is told and yeah I just also I feel like the like big the big thing you want to happen at the end doesn't really happen. We do have this secret society kind of that is like the big bad in the end and I feel like the way this is dealt with ultimately wasn't just as explosive and exciting as I wanted it to be. And I think in a way it was fitting with the tone of the book and how the story was told 
but at the same time I just felt like it wasn't quite satisfying for what I wanted. So overall I would say if you are deciding or trying to decide whether to pick up this book, if you like this fairy tale style, if you like this idea of doors to different worlds, but you also don't mind not really going through those doors for quite a long time, then um, I would say give it a try. I definitely would never uh, discourage you from reading it. But also just be prepared that it's not quite mind-blowing, I would say. <laughs> um, I still think that it is quite clever and that is also one thing I was thinking about with the whole like YA adult thing. That I'm not quite sure whether a YA reader would pick up on all the like clever things, like as I explained with the names for example. But I think Looking back, I was a very pretentious reader when I was a teen, so I probably would have. <laughs> so just keep that in mind if you're interested in the book. I think that's all I'm gonna say for the spoiler-free part for the ending. I do want to get into a couple of spoilers towards the end now for people who have read the book or if you just don't care about spoilers and you want to hear a little bit more. So if you are leaving the video now, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like or a nice comment. I would love to hear whether you think about picking this book up now or whether this is probably not for you. Let me know in the comments. And for everyone else, just a tiny, tiny spoiler bit now at the end. The thing that kind of bothered me with this book, um, is especially with the parents of our main character. Now, we do get their story with the book that our main character reads, and I think the whole structure of this, like with the story of our main character, not really beginning until the halfway point of the book, because like pretty much all she does is read her parents' story. I just, it just didn't quite work for me. I just felt like, you know, you're... you're <laughs> You're kind of secondhand reading, I don't know. Sometimes it works in stories, oftentimes for me personally it does not. So I think this could have been done a little bit differently. For the first half of the book I was like, I would rather read the story of her parents, to be honest, um, and not her, because she's not really doing anything. And up until the end, the lives of her parents, compared to what we see of her life, are so much more exciting and when she starts her exciting journey the book ends and I'm like no that's not what I was here for I wanted to go through these doors I wanted to have excitement and we just don't get that and then the the moment the parents find each other again and they have January and then decide to go back to our world I was so mad at her mother for her white privilege because obviously she's from the south she's from kentucky in the 1900s and she's like oh yeah i want my old aunt to meet my mixed race child and i don't know how she thought that that was a good idea and she's also like yeah and i want to show her that i have a man who actually stuck around and to her aunt's eyes that would be a man of color she would not have been excited about that and I just I I really didn't understand that that choice and also when it's described that she has I think some Latino men help her bring the ship up the mountain to go through the door and it's described how she just never considered that them bringing a white woman up a mountain and then her disappearing that that would be a problem for these men and I, it, uh, I don't know I, I, you know for a woman who is supposed to have traveled so far in her time I just didn't get it I just didn't get it unfortunately like I was really really pissed at that and honestly like that would have changed the whole story if she just would have been oh well maybe this isn't the best idea maybe I shouldn't be doing that it would have completely changed that story forever so yeah that, that's just that's just one thing that just bothered me so much and then obviously we also have like other decisions from her parents 
that I just really couldn't wrap my head around, like her father looking for a door and he realizes at some point that someone is after him, closing every single door he finds and he still continues to look for the right door to go back to his wife without his daughter. And I'm like, you know, yeah, if you find the door, you can't go through it because you don't have your daughter with you. It doesn't make any sense. And I just, I just got so frustrated with the parents. And then, yeah, as I said, with January's story herself, I think it could have been really exciting. I think the friends she makes along the way, especially with Jane, it could have been such a great story. But the, the parts where they're adventuring is just like, and now we slept in a hay barn, and now we jumped on a train, and now we arrived in New Jersey. And I'm like, why? Why do you leave that out? Because that is the exciting part where things could happen, where, you know what I mean? And, and also the like dangerous situations, I feel like they're always just repeats. They always kind of happen in the same way, where like an evil guy shows up and he like explains part of what he's doing and why he's doing it. And then January is like, oh my God, it's also like, wow. And then, you know, it, it's just, it's just happening again and again. And especially with the final showdown and her like foster father just being like, you know what? Now I'm going to explain everything to you <laughs> while you're under my thrall. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 that was just not it. So yeah, not, not the great book I wanted. Still gonna keep trying to read her books. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see because I think Alex E. Harrow writes quite different books. So one of them might be a hit. We'll see about that. But yeah, for this one, it was fine. It was okay. But I don't think I will be thinking about it in the future at all. So that's the end of this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.